We now have a very interesting guest in studio with us because it is Valentine's Day. We are really working on and trying to put across the impact of the necessity of life. Therefore, we thought, why not talk about the new Road Traffic Act? Our government has recently introduced the Road Traffic Act statutory instrument 118 of 2023. And we have in studio with us to unpack it and tell us a bit more about it and deep dive into it, Last Kabudura. Good morning to you, Last. Thank you so very much for joining us here. And good morning, Zimbabwe. Very good morning, Gina Dina. It's great to have you. Now, let's talk about, let, we're going to dive straight in because I have loads of questions for you today. So, tell me about SI 118. Um, what, why, did, why was this enacted? What was the reasoning behind a new enactment? So, to kickstart that uh, conversation, you may recall what has been happening over the years that uh, there's been a lot of uh, road carnages, or we could say some accidents, and the history shows that uh, the numbers have been increasing uh, alarmingly. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I'm sure one of the days you could imagine y your own mother, your own friend, or perhaps somebody that you really love getting involved in an accident. And then it wasn't because the majority thought, let's have this push to the government. But mm -hmm. the government of Zimbabwe, out of uh, interest and love for the people, decided that this is time. Mm -hmm. Why can't we control the speed in the roads? Because one of the contributing factors for these carnages is you know drivers being reckless, mm -hmm. uh, fast speeds, especially those PSVs, the public service vehicles. Mm -hmm. So of course, from that direction, you can see that the government was trying to protect Zimbabwe and everyone else. So you mm. know, I know that speed limiting and monitoring devices was something that was quite big, and this is a new development. Number one, how does that all come together? Like. How do they work, these devices? Number two, where, like, you know, is everybody going to be able to, to access them? What's the accessibility like for these devices? Could we di deep dive into the devices a bit? Okay, so let's start by looking at the device itself. I'm sure for years people have known that there is something called uh, a tracker, which is a tracking device that uh, makes use of the GPS, which is the Global Positioning System. Mm -hmm. So now uh, what it does is the government had another SI before the SI 118 to 2023. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, instituted in 2015. That was controlling generally the speed. So mm -hmm. that was called um, speed monitoring. Mm -hmm. So what are you saying? We monitor only, but we cannot curb. Mm -hmm. We cannot harness the speed itself. So the SSSI 118 of 2023 now introduced the device, which is a computer box. So the computer box, what it does, it's integrated with the vehicle. Most likely, most of the vehicles that have got uh, a computer box, they can actually understand the communication, you know, between this device and itself, which is the signal itself. Yeah. So now once the speed that is predetermined or preset is reached, the device knows that, you know what, I'm told to cut. Making use of the technology of today that we call relays, mm -hmm. which then goes and cuts off the fuel that is coming into the vehicle. Into, into the vehicle. So let me just quickly say that a lot of people are scared that uh, it might damage the vehicle. Okay, but uh, just before we get into mm -hmm. the damaging of the mm -hmm. vehicle, I just want to ask a quick question because mm -hmm. we are getting into this um, electric vehicle mm -hmm. age. How will that be like, because you're saying it cuts off the fuel, yeah? So now if it's an electric vehicle, it, does it have the capacity to work on those? Quite interesting. So now uh, that is part, the first part of how it controls vehicles using fuel. But you understand that uh, when a vehicle moves, there are so many facets of you know, the uh, mechanical part of the vehicle. It could be maybe motors, anything that pushes it forward. Mm. So what we're doing is we're not cutting off, we are retarding. Okay. We are stifling uh -huh. anything that is giving, us, giving it power. All right, and what happens to the older vehicles that don't necessarily maybe have a computer box that um, can speak to the device? What happens to those vehicles? So it has been a question of interest, especially to quite a lot of people, because of course you can imagine 90% of the trucks, uh, as the SI says that it's only a truck that is uh, with a mass of 4,600. Mm. So then we go to buses, it's, you know, those old buses we used to call chicken buses they don't have computer boxes. Mm. So of course, what we have come up with, of course, in the industry is uh, something that is called a mechanical pedal controller, or it could be, you know, uh, a solenoid, pump solenoid. So mm. what we're trying to do is that, uh, you know, long back then they used to use a bolt. Yeah. So they would put a bolt under a, an accelerator. Right, so so when you press it, too far down. it exactly, goes to then it doesn't point. go. Yeah. So what we do now, we put a wire that actually pulls the accelerator on the opposite direction. Oh, so wow. what happens is when you reach a speed, it's it goes fighting the accelerator. It. So <laughs> the driver, when he wants to push, 
is stuck one position. So we achieve the same result. That's amazing. Now, how accessible are these devices to the general public? Like, are they available to everybody? What, how do we get them? Very much so, because what the, the Minister of Transport did quickly is that they had to invite all those who were interested, stakeholders, including the installers, and, uh, you know, the associations in the transport. They said, oh, hey, guys, we're getting to this, but are we ready? So they prepared ahead of time. So there are a lot of companies listed in installers, and if anyone wants to know, if you go to any VID, they've got a list of companies that, that are approved. And uh, for starters, they had to go through, you know, the test with SARS, mm. with the Standard Association of Zimbabwe. To but say now, it, do yeah. we, do, uh, so just speaking of them being accessible at any VID, is there, um, are we, do we have to, is it mandatory to get these installed in our vehicles? And what's the time frame? Okay, and just so as a final question <coughs> to round, out, uh, round that out. So this is really mandatory uh, in the sense that uh, it has to be done by the end of June this year. And of course, if it doesn't happen, police will be now stopping vehicles in the roads. That's, that's, uh, yeah, well, as you've heard it, he said, not just mandatory, very, very, very mandatory. So yes, um, if you want more information, which you actually need, go to your closest VID. Uh, we've got a few in Harare. We've got them, you know, uh, intermittently across the country. So please get further information. This is to save yours and your family's lives, preserve the lives of those you love. And it is Valentine's Day after all, you know, maybe pop into VID today. But Mr. Last Kamburura, thank you so very much for joining us on air. I could have spoken to you for about two hours, honestly. You have so much to, uh, that I'd like to unpack. Um, but, you know, it is that we need to do um, a little bit more of the news and then we've got a few more things. But if you'd like to stay in studio with us, we'd love to keep you. So proceeding with our bulletin, residents of Jishavani are over the moon after benefiting from the Second Republic's devolution program, which is transforming previously marginalized communities across the country. This comes after the commissioning of a fire tender and four service vehicles in the town.